Welcome. Let's let's talk about designing Google Docs. If you get this in a design system design interview question, there's actually one thing that really people are looking for. One, they're looking for you to design a system. We've already talked about this with designing a social media app. You can go check that out um, on YouTube if you want to see that. And all of those things apply. You're going to have to design some system. But there's one key special thing. It's like when they're asking you to design Twitter and you need to know about Twitter's fan out and fan in because it's common knowledge and it's kind of the unique thing that Twitter had to solve themselves. Now, Google Docs also has a unique thing that we're going to talk about. And the thing about Google Docs is there's multiple people editing. It supports multiple people editing. That's what we proved here is, you know, we're going to edit here. This is where we're editing. Hey, right there. And then over on another screen, I'm simulating another person sitting here. You can see I'm moving around and Merrick was here and we're both editing this document at the same time. Obviously, I'm editing it on the same one. But this is the unique thing that Google Docs brings. Now, there's other people that do it. There's there's Outlook. Uh, I, th I believe Word now supports this. There, there are other services that do this, but I believe Google Docs was one of the first and is generally the one asked for in the interview. So multiple people can edit a Google Doc. And... I'm going to say this, and I keep going back to the same thing. In these interviews, what you want to do is ask questions. Don't assume multiple people can edit, but if you ask the question, can multiple people edit at the same time? Now you, now you know for certain if this is what your interviewer is looking for or one of the things. So again, you still need to design the whole system. You need to design a service, a cache, a whatever. But there is a thing that does this. This is, it's called a conflict-free replicated data type. One second. It's a, <laughs> I said that, <laughs> I put a question mark in there, but it's a CRDT, which is a conflict-free replicated data type. The conflict-free is hyphenated. That's why it's not a CFRDT. But it's in distributed computing, a conflict-free replicated data type is a data structure that is replicated across multiple computers in a network with the following features. The application can update any replicated independently, concurrently, and without coordinating with other replicas. Now, you're right that Dirk is pointing out a very niche point that Google Doc technically doesn't use CRDTs in how people think about them, but they do use them in spirit. Um, and I was actually going to get into that. So an interesting thing about CRDTs is you can edit them offline. So you know what? We're going to open up a drawing. And this isn't a, a deep dive into CRDTs. Again, we can do that if you'd like that. This is just going to be a high level what they're looking for in this. Uh, let's say that there's four people editing this, this thing, um, you know, actually we'll just go ahead and copy this. And when they're all online, when they're all online, they are basically sharing. Basically they're all communicating, chit chatting together and, uh, keeping each other up to date on the latest stuff. Um, and, and yeah. Anyways, this would look something like this. Should have done it with fewer. Anyways, so they're all chit-chatting and everybody sees everybody else's change. But this one can go offline. This one can go offline. That's not at all what I wanted to do. Um, this one can go offline. And the thing is, with a conflict-free uh, replicated data type, you can edit this one offline. You can continue editing. And when it comes back online, it will resynchronize your changes with everyone. This is generally when we talk about databases and we're talking about um, we're eventual consistency, uh, conflict-free replicated data types are the epitome of eventual consistency. So basically, these these try to catch each other back up. And the, the big thing with a conflict-free replicated data type is that if client A 
and client B do the same steps on a piece of data. So if they do, you know, step one, uh, two, and three, and if the uh, um, client B does steps one, two, and three, your document will be the same in the end. So as long as we can replay these steps, we'll be able to have a conflict-free uh, data type. Now, obviously there are times when this doesn't work out perfectly, when these edits conflict with edits made here and that usually in in the case of most of these can be uh reviewed by a human to resolve um there's different ways to resolve this and again if we get into conflict free uh replicated data types uh crdts we can talk more heavily on some of the ways that you can resolve those the easiest way is to have a human review those conflicts um where you edited the exact same thing and yeah so google's doesn't do this exactly. And this is probably bonus points. I don't think an interviewer would expect you to know this. Google uses a central server. I'm not entirely sure if they still do. I'm not entirely sure because, and the reason I say this is they do allow you to edit offline now. They do allow you to edit offline, which was one of the things that you couldn't do originally. So originally, Google basically did CRDTs, CRDTs on the server side. And so all of these had to have a connection here. Nowadays, Google does allow you to edit offline and then reconnect, but it still requires a central server. With a true CRDT, you don't actually need a server. This is all peer-to-peer. -peer. You can run this all peer-to-peer -peer without a centralized server. While Google still leverages a centralized server for for a couple reasons, I believe. Um, we can get into this, but if you're talking about why you would use a centralized server, um, there's stuff like RBAC that Google is enforcing. Their centralized server says who has permission to do what and when, who has edit, who has viewer, who has comment, those types of things that have to go through this server. So to enforce these, they have to have a centralized servers. Even if they implemented CRDTs proper, you would still have a, a centralized server aspect to it, because that's one of the features Google Docs brings. Not anybody can just pick up your CDRT and edit it. Now, you could do this with, let's say I started a CRDT here, and I enforce them on that. But then again, you're just recreating a, a centralized server. Anyways, this is this is what Google does. So ask this, can multiple e people edit the document at the same time? These are. This is important because if the answer is yes, and you're Google, you're designing a system like Google Docs, then you're probably wanting to use a CRDT, um, and you should know the basics of a CRDT, um, a conflict-free replicated data type. Whew. I don't know why I'm having such trouble with that. All right. Now again, there is designing the whole system that goes with this. CRDT again because because you're providing this system you don't want just CRDTs you want the ability for people to log in store these files somewhere so don't just get lost on talking about this because this is a key thing that they're checking to see if your knowledge is up to date but this file that you're editing you need to store the file somewhere so don't forget the basics you got to store that file somewhere. You know, a, a Google Docs doesn't just store it on your computer. Now, maybe you can have a local copy. That's cool. That's fine. But it doesn't just store it there. You got to store it somewhere in the cloud, somewhere where the user can access it from anywhere. Actually, that's a good question. Can the user uh, edit document in the cloud? You're asking the question, do I need to store this file or are you just creating a, a web browser CRDT? Um, most people, if they're asking this question, this is going to be yes. Um, you know, what about RBAC? Uh, this is kind of a follow up to people edit at the same time. Uh, this is a follow up here is do you need RBAC? Um, do you need role based uh, access to this file? 
you know, viewer. And then, and then you can follow this up as what rules, uh, what roles do you want and, and whatnot. These questions allow you to understand the system a little better and design this. So m that's pretty much it. Are there any other questions regarding this? Um, again, it, it comes down to standard system design after the CRDTs. Maybe you can show bonus knowledge that originally, and again, I don't know if Google uses CRDTs now because they support offline. Um, but originally they didn't have, they, they used a different, I don't remember it off the top of my head. Um, it was like an older type of CRDT that required a centralized server to do the conflicts, um, the conflicts. There can be a centralized server, like I said, you got to if you're storing this server, if you're enforcing our back on this CRDTs, that that's not a part of the CRDT spec. Um, all of this comes from a centralized server. Who has access to edit this file? Who doesn't have access to edit this file? And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Again, it's just designing a system in general. Um, the CRDTs are here. They're they're just a piece of the system. And if they're asking you to design a thing like Google Docs, they're just checking, you know, one, can you do basic system design? But on top of that, um, do you know the common methodology people would have for this? So uh, let's let's take a few notes here. Uh, checking basic system design storing docs are back etc to know if you know about crdts uh okay uh do you need to store the file in the cloud and and don't be too scared they're not going to expect you to know everything about a CRDT or be an expert in it. This is, you know, asking you to do something to see your basic overall design skills, as well as understand if you at least know where to start looking. You know, some of this is like, I don't expect people to know everybody everything in it, but I do expect them to know where to start looking. Do you know the right things to start searching? Because if you didn't know about CRDTs, you might start trying to design a system that can do this conflict resolution and all of this stuff and basically be recreating a CRDT. Again, I don't expect you to have implemented a C... I have not implemented a CRDT before. If we want to do that, we could do that. But it's not a requirement to pass this interview. Um, it's saying that you know where to start. And you can say, hey, I don't know how a CRDT handles this, but I could look it up. Do you want me to look it up right now? Or would you prefer just to move on? Most of the time, they'll probably just say to move on. That's fine. Um, uh, really passing this is un showing that you understand the problem and you ask questions about the problem um, and you ask follow-up questions to it. That that's what they're looking for. There are CRDT solutions. Um, there's JavaScript CRDTs. Uh, JavaScript CRDT. I I mean, there are off-the-shelf solutions here. Um, like I said, I've never actually used one. I've never done something like this. I wish that Confluence would support a CRDT <laughs> because I don't know what they do, but it's, it's rough. Um, yeah. So anyways, that's the basics of how to design Google Docs if you get asked that as a question. If you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. Otherwise, let's let's move forward. Let's move forward.